All right, today we're gonna go through the iNav PIDs, rates, filters, and mechanics tabs to try to get a better understanding of all the different settings and how they compare to some of the settings you may be used to in beta flight. This is gonna be one video in my series of videos on iNav. I will drop a link below to the video description for the playlist. But today we're going to hit on the PIDs tuning tab and try to demystify some of the settings you'll see within. So first up here is the PIDs gains tab. And really what you see is what you get in regard to this. Basically just the PID gains, the proportional integral and derivative and feed forward. So that is very similar to what you see over here in Betaflight with proportional integral and then derivative and the feed forward there as well. Betaflight does have a twist where they have like a D dynamic D gains. Um, INAV has the same things. We'll talk about that here in just a second, but you don't see that dynamic D gains up here with like a min and max gain. They handle it just a different way. Of course, you have the roll pitch and y'all and these very much work that you can either use the slider or and type in the number. And then once you hit tab to the next number, it just kind of moves the slider automatically. Unfortunately, it does not have sliders that basically lock the interchangeability between the gains, which is what matters the most. Uh, hopefully we'll see that uh, added in the future in iNav and, and other firmwares because it is awful convenient to be when you want to increase prop wash performance, you just move all the gains up at once. You don't have to like move each of these and then move each of these and then keep the ratio between the P and the D and the I term all. And it just is a lot easier to just move one slider. But that's not in here, so you will have to move the gains up manually. So although there's sliders here, they're not the exact same setup as over here. Uh, they're kind of just manual PID gains that have a slider representation on them. The other option down here is you can show advanced PID controls, and this is mostly for barometer, uh, sonar, and altitude. So those will be related to some of the GPS modes, which we will get into tuning those later. Uh, so these are your core uh, PID controllers for like acro or manual mode uh, with a quadcopter and then this if you're using GPS assisted modes then these will come into play and I'll be doing specific tuning videos uh, where we're going to tune altitude hold and things like that and then we'll be using these parameters. Of course down here we have the angle and horizon modes we have the strength and cutoff and transition and that is very similar to what we see here in beta flight where we have the angle horizon uh, here it's broken out. You have the strength 1550 so you can actually separate those and then the angle low pass filter That's what LPF stands for the cutoff There is the low pass filter that is on the accelerometer. So that's at 15 Hertz That is you don't see that over here in beta flight that is in the CLI in beta flight uh, It's actually a little lower than that. I believe is the default in beta flight the transition for horizon mode is the angle in which you transition from uh, angle mode where it self levels to once you go beyond the 70 degrees, you'll be in uh, acro mode. Of course, in angle mode, you can't go beyond. So the one thing you don't see here that you do in beta flight is this angle limit uh, for when you're in angle mode. That's actually under the rates and expo tab, which we'll get into next. And you can see that max roll angle and pitch angle. So you can actually have it two different settings in INAP where in beta flight, it is just one setting. So it's gonna be 55 degrees on max pitch forward and max roll, whereas you can differentiate those here. So that leads us into the next tab, the rates and expo tab. Here you can see you can sit your max roll and pitch and yaw rates here in degrees per second. So the amount of percent expo you can set anywhere from zero to 100. As you can see on here, you don't have a graphic. The graphic to actually show you the difference between the two is actually in the receivers tab here. So if I click on the receivers tab and you can slide down, and these are bunched up a little bit here because I have it kind of shrunk on my screen, but you can see that expo curve that you're getting. This is up at my max rate. That's actually 100%. So if I set this to example for 0 0.5, 0 0.5, you'll see the curve change there, that blue curve. And then if I would save and reboot, then when I go back into here, you'll see these are now 50%. Vice versa, if I set these to 25 and 25, and then just hit save down here. Now it's odd that in the other page I have to hit save and reboot, but here I can just hit save. Then I can go back into here and then you can see that change right there without having to do a save and reboot. So it's a little, little different. 
The other setting you'll see in here is the heading hold rate limit. This has to do with waypoint missions, return to home and things of that nature. It's going to be the maximum degrees per second that the quad will yaw. So if you want nice, smooth yaw turns uh, when it's going in waypoint missions in an automated uh, flight mode, then that's what you would adjust. Those are for servo control. So for quadcopters, we would just go ahead and ignore these. Now for these other items like TPA throttle limit and mid throttle expo, we just have to go to different pages for those. So for the throttle expo part, where you can see it right here, here's the graphic. So I have my throttle expo. Now back under the filters tab, if I want to get to TPA, that's going to be under the mechanics. And you'll see under there that you have your TPA down here, your uh, thrust PID attenuation TPA is right here. You can see it's 20% and a 1200 breakpoint, whereas in beta flight, it's 65% at a 13 something, 1350 breakpoint. But before I get into the other items of the mechanics page, let's go into the filters page. And here there's quite a bit of differences. The first thing we have here is just the main gyro low pass filter. So this is similar to beta flight, or at least how beta flight used to be or can be, you can still change this. You don't have these sliders up top here, um, like you see in Betaflight to move the filters around to kind of simplify things. Uh, but you do have kind of these, all these sliders to, to do somewhat of the same thing. Uh, this is basically a single low pass filter. Uh, it's a PT1 filter, but you do have other options you could change it to. So like in Betaflight here, you can change this to a PT1, Biquad, PT2, or PT3. Those options are in iNav, even a PT3, which is a pretty new filter in Betaflight. Those were ported into iNav. And again, you can change this in the COI, which I'll show you in a second. This low pass cutoff here is similar to these cutoffs. So you can see this is at 250 to 500. But what's the difference is that in iNav, you don't have these dynamic filters where they're moving up and down. So essentially, if I wanted to mimic this in beta flight, what I would need to do is then I can bring this down and that's at 110. I can't get exactly on it, but around 112 uh, using the slider. Of course, I could turn off the slider and then just type this in right here as 110. And essentially that is the same thing. Now iNav does not have a low pass one and low pass two in the same sense that Betaflight does where it's just the same low pass filter, but it kind of does because of this unicorn filter as they call it. Really that's the uh, Coleman filter that uh, comes from Emu Flight, uh, maybe some sweet tweets to it. And really a Coleman filter that just simplifies down to a low pass filter. So think of this as this is your main low pass filter. And then there is a low pass too. And but that uh, cutoff is uh, with a Q of 200 is just about the same as 100 Hertz cutoff. It will settle into that without getting into too much detail. I will make a link to a video down in the video description where you can check out all that, where we kind of simplify what the, the Coleman filter or the unicorn filter really is. And again, it's just a low pass. It's a PT1 low pass filter. So the Q factor is how you adjust that. A higher Q factor means that the cutoff of the Coleman or the unicorn filter will be higher. A lower Q factor means the cutoff of the unicorn filter will be lower. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of more things that are changed, more things that are the same. Wedged in between the two, we have this matrix filter. The matrix filter is really just iNav's dynamic notch filter. So if we go down to here, you can see we have our dynamic notch filter. Now in Betaflight's newest dynamic notch filter, you have a notch count, which can go up to five. That is three, you know, one to five uh, notches hunting around independently all on the same access, all on each access for peaks of noise. And it's going to crush those out. Whereas in iNav, you only have one notch uh, per access and it for where it's detecting where the peaks are. What it does is that if it detects a peak on the roll axis at say uh, 250 Hertz, it's going to put notches on the pitch and yaw at that same frequency. And then the same thing for the pitch access, it's going to do the same thing there. So if it detects on the pitch access, a peak at 100 Hertz, it's going to put notches on the pitch roll and yaw at 100 Hertz as well. So it's going to make a three by three kind of matrix of where these notches at, or it's it's not a matrix, but it's three by three and 
uh, somewhat associated with a matrix. So that uh, that's the name of it. So when you see matrix filter, uh, think dynamic notch. Uh, same Q factor here as you see in Betaflight. You can see the default here is 300 and uh, INAV it's 250. So just about the same. And then this min cutoff frequency is the same thing here as you have as the min there. Moving on to the D-term filter here, you can see we can kind of do the same thing by just setting that to static and then moving that around. So that's 110. I can get close to that 112. I could again, turn off the slider and just type it in there. But essentially that's what that is. Now the default for this is a PT3 filter. So that's actual default is a PT3. Again, we'll go into the CLI and I'll show you where you can see that. And then of course, finally, there is the RPM filter uh, that INAV has as well. Uh, this is if you have ESC telemetry, but it's a little different because they don't have bi-directional support. You actually have to have ESC telemetry hooked up. So it is, it's gonna use the, the ESC telemetry, which Betaflight could have used, but the problem is the ESC telemetry is too slow. So don't expect the same performance out of the RPM filter that you would get in Betaflight because they're not using the bi-directional D-shot. They're using literally the ESC. You have to wire your ESCs up for the telemetry wire if they're individual, or if they're a four in one, you just have to usually set the UART that you need. And then you will get RPM filtering. The problem again is they're a little delayed and uh, but that's everything on notches that delay can uh, make or break you so it is there and again if you would enable the rpm filter on Betaflight now again they just have one they don't have the three harmonics so this would be the same setting that you would see in Betaflight for what you're seeing here in inav for its rpm filter now the rabbit hole gets a little deeper on filters because although these are the filters you see here in this tab, if you go into the CLI, it's a whole different story. There's a ton of hidden filters in here. So for the first one, we can see a little bit more settings for the unicorn or the Kalman filter. If we type in get Kalman, like I said, it's the Kalman filter, not the unicorn. And you can see here, uh, we have the Q factor, but there is here then an option to turn it off. So if you did want to do that, you could type in set and then paste that, copy and paste that line and type in off instead of on, hit enter and then type save and that would reboot the flight controller and then turn the common filter off. Now the other hidden filters you can see in here is if you type in get LPF for low pass filter, you can see if we scroll back up to the top here, we have a number of these. Now this is the hardware low pass filter, so that's pretty normal, just leave that where it's at. Uh, but we do have this anti-aliasing filter, which is turned on and is also PT1. So just like in Betaflight, where there was two, a low-pass filter one and a low-pass filter two, there is actually two low-pass filters on. So it actually had three low-pass filters on in uh, INAB by default, because you have the main low-pass filter, which is low-pass filter one. You have the anti-aliasing filter, which is low-pass filter two. And then you have the common filter, which is, uh, again, reduces down to just a simple PT1 low-pass filter. So you can see that is here. You have different options. It's a PT1. You can also set it to bi-quad, then you can change the frequency right here for that. Here's the one that's shown on the GUI screen, the main LPF. You, again, you can see it's set to P, the PT1. You can also change it to bi-quad. And uh, here as well, you can make that a dynamic low-pass filter, just like in Betaflight as well, since this was copied and ported over. Just like in Betaflight, there is a min and a max. So if you would turn this to on, you would have the min and the max settings. So there's a lot in here uh, that you can play with to make this very much similar to Betaflight. There is even most recent dynamic filter Expo, which uh, just how quickly the low pass filter rises when you raise throttle. Now sliding down here, you can see as we talked about before, here is the accelerometer low pass filter. This variable is exposed in the GUI and we touched on that. This was right below where all the angle mode settings were and you can change that from a bi-quad to PT1 if you wanted to here. There's a servo low pass filter. It's, it's, uh, it's airplane stuff more than anything. But then down here, we have the D-term low pass filter. You can see that's at 100 Hertz. This is the same thing that was shown in the GUI. But then again, here, here you can see where it's set to a PT3, which you have PT1, bi-quad PT2, and PT3 as options there. 
Do note there's also the D-term low pass filter two, which is set to zero, which means off in low pass filter terms. So you could turn that on to have two D-term filters, low pass filters back to back. And if you would turn that to any Hertz other than zero, like set that to 100, 150, something like that, you can then, of course, it's a PT1 by default, but you could change that to these filter types here as well. And then finally, there is a yaw low pass filter, just like in Betaflight here as well. There even is the option here for the Smith predictive low pass filter, uh, which is ported over from Emu Flight. That basically takes the filtered data and does the derivative of it, which really just adds noise back in. It advances the signal to make it not uh, lagged by the filtering, but it kind of adds the noise back in, so it's kind of redundant, but nevertheless, uh, it is there. And it looks like, honestly, it, it's active. So that's uh, going to undo some filter delay, but also add noise back into the signal. So you might wanna use that or not, well, it's up to you. And lastly, let's go into the mechanics page. And in the mechanics page, we have a number of items that would just be located on the PID settings page in Betaflight. The first up is the iTerm Relax. So this is a key feature of both firmwares that locks the iTerm when you implement a sharp uh, input, which is critical. The cutoff factors are basically the same between the two, uh, 15 and 15 is, is about the same. You can see the cutoff here is 15. This is 15 as well. And they just don't have the settings here, which probably most people don't ever adjust anyways. And again, they don't have the setting between gyro and set point, which again, people probably don't adjust anyway. So really that cutoff is everything. There's your cutoff that you can change right there if you wanted to increase or decrease that. Of course, if you're having uh, any slow bounce back, you do a sharp uh, flip or roll, got some real slow bounce back. If you're not sure if it's P to D balance or maybe the I term is winding up and causing that, just come into here and move this down. Uh, I usually, you know, for a test, I would move it down to five, see if you still have it. That will definitely lock out uh, your I term. We are familiar with the anti-gravity gain. That is the same here that you see in Betaflight, just some different options over here in Betaflight. You have the smoothing versus, you know, so on and so forth. Again, most people are probably just adjusting the gain here, and this is the gain itself. Now there is a big fundamental difference under the hood. In iNav, you are not boosting the P and the I term together, which is a big mistake. They should be doing both at the same time. They're just boosting the I term, which is kind of the old Betaflight way. It's really when we started to see Betaflight boost the P and the I did we see a huge increase in performance for getting rid of those nasty throttles when you punch the throttle or do a punch out and jump off the throttle and you get that dip that went almost completely away uh, in a flight performance issue, uh, again, when anti-gravity got changed in beta flight to boost both. So hopefully that will be a change in the future, but just know right now in iNav 5.1 that it's just boosting the eye gain. So you're not gonna see quite the performance that you would recognize in beta flight. The anti-gravity accelerator, I'm not quite sure what that does. I don't see any documentation out there on that. I will have to get back. I will do a pinned comment if I figure that out um, and uh, put that down there below. And then the anti-gravity cutoff is set to 15. That is how sensitive the anti-gravity is to trigger. Uh, again, that setting is in Betaflight's CLI, so it's kind of hidden, but here on the iNav, it's uh, you know right there for you to adjust. So if you want the anti-gravity to trigger more often, um, basically with a slower stick move, you're going to head and reduce this number if you want it to trigger less. So you'd have to really move the throttle super quick, then you increase this number, I would think to like 20, 25, or if you want it to trigger when just kind of slow throttle increases, uh, maybe bring that down to 10. Five would be pretty, pretty, uh, it'd trigger a lot with five. Uh, this yaw eye term freeze bank angle that has to do with airplanes and locking out the rudder control. So for quad, you ignore that. And we touched on before that iNav does have a D boost mechanism. It's actually quite a bit of changes in here for this. So the first is when you do a sharp stick input, D term kind of fights that because your P is trying to push the quad into the stick, move feet forward as well. But the D term is saying, no, 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 it doesn't like any change. So even you inputting stick moves, it doesn't like that. So iNav has a feature, an option here that will actually suppress the D term. When it's at uh, 0.8, it's gonna suppress the D term by 20%, the difference between 0.8 and one. 
Uh, and then when you're approaching your max rate, it's actually going to boost in this case by 1.2. So that means it's going to boost it by 20% with that setting. If I set that to two, it would boost it by two to stop you from overshooting. So you do have control kind of on both sides of that, which is something you don't have with Betaflight. Uh, with Betaflight, it's going to start to boost when you implement a stick move uh, right off the bat. So the angular acceleration is essentially when the D boost is going to be fully activated. And this is your max degrees per second squared. Uh, that's what this number would be. So um, yeah, uh, I have to play around with that a little bit, but you can see here in the tooltips help on a little bit on that. That's basically gonna control how sensitive the boosting is to your stick inputs. If you want it to be more sensitive, you're gonna lower this number. If you want it to be less sensitive, you're gonna increase that number. Now, D-Boost, just like in Betaflight, will ultimately boost based on it reading that the gyro is oscillating a lot or the quad, you know, if the gyro is oscillating, it means the quad's oscillating a lot and it can boost the D-Games to kind of steady that out. Betaflight has the dynamic damping gains over here and you can see it's set to 35 and in iNav here you can see they just call it a low pass filter which is what Betaflight is as well to detect that. They have that set at 80. So if you reduce this slider again it will be more sensitive to any gyro oscillations or quad oscillations and go ahead and boost those damping gains. Uh, and if you increase this slider it's going to be less sensitive to that so it won't boost it uh, as quickly or as much when you have the quad oscillating. Wing level, this has to do with wings. Same thing with this. So we're gonna go ahead and ignore those for now uh, since we're quad specific on this video. So that is my review and summary of the iNav PID tuning tab. Hopefully that was helpful to kind of translate between what you may hopefully know with Betaflight and even maybe some tips on Betaflight and what things do uh, and translate that to iNav. You can see there's a lot of similarities there between the two, but there are definitely some differences. I do have a video of where I flashed iNav up to this quad and went ahead and flew that out there and uh, flies pretty good on default. Not, not too bad, always room for improvement, but uh, not shabby at all for a typical five inch freestyle quad. I'm gonna go ahead and make a link down to that standalone video because it's a little bit longer and this video is long enough. And uh, check that out if you would like. In the next part of this series, we're going to work to tune this up and then we're gonna get some GPS on this quad and we're gonna start talking about some of the GPS assisted flight modes and how you can tune those, specifically altitude hold, things of that nature. So if you're interested in that content, please go ahead and hit subscribe. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and maybe share it around to some friends or whatnot. If you want to support the channel even further, go ahead and check out the links to my Patreon down below. Just for as little as a cup of coffee a month, you can help support me and it makes a big difference in getting this content out. But until the next video, thanks everybody. And I hope this helps.